with the work that we did auditing facial recognition, it was very clear that first of all, you know, the data sets that we curate as a research community represent a very specific world worldview of the people that created it um, and also very specific biases, but it also demonstrates a high level of neglect, right? People are not doing a good job analyzing the data sets that they're using um, and to, to sort of develop models that they deploy broadly, um, but also they don't even feel a sense of responsibility. They don't feel like it's one of their jobs to pay attention to these decisions and record them and communicate them. Um, so that's been um, a really big challenge. Um, but then to sort of speak to, again, the sort of like title of this workshop or, or conversation, which is sort of how does that affect what we can expect with respect to how, you know, how well these models can adhere to like our ethical expectations as a society. Um, I think it does mean something very interesting where um, I've been recently reading a lot about like, uh, like the automobile industry and how engineering responsibility plays out in that space. And it's really fascinating because, um, you know, if you're uh, designing a car or building a car, um, it's very clear what kind of decisions you're making. Um, so people are very meticulous in terms of how they you know, they communicate to each other and to the public about the details of the car's design. You know, if you have a car where the brakes don't work, uh, you're able to, uh, you know, understand that that's an error that was made and you understand that it's something that you can fix. Uh, but when someone comes to you and starts talking to you about, you know, oh, you know, cars are inherently awful because they lead to roads that ruin our cities or cars are inherently awful because, um, you know, they cause pollution, people can really differentiate between oh, you know, this is a type, this is a brand of car or a, a make of a car that has dysfunctional brakes. So we can recall the entire make of this car. And they can differentiate that conversation from the conversation of uh, cars are bad for the planet. So uh, we need to completely reinvent the way that we do cars or we need to completely get rid of cars. Um, and I feel like in the AI machine learning space, that conversation is not very clear cut. Um, so people will have ethical expectations, um, and this came up a lot with facial recognition, where facial recognition is incredibly harmful when it doesn't work, uh, when it misidentifies someone um, that is a threat to their life. They could be, you know, misidentified, falsely accused, and then falsely arrested. Um, but it's also a huge threat when it does work. There's these huge privacy risks that are inherent to collecting, you know, millions of examples of biometric data and storing it um, in a way that uh, doesn't necessarily always reflect like the highest security <laughs> security standards. Um, and I noticed that so there's certain characteristics of deep learning, you know, the data requirement, the resource requirement, um, uh, you know, just basic characteristics of deep learning models that, you know, Zach and Christian have already mentioned, the inherent bias in the model um, that, are, that are just like, you know, this is the way deep learning works. We, we right now, we require you to collect all of this information. And I think there's um, this tension that now exists where it's like, if you wanna use deep learning today, you'll actually have to contend with the fact that um, you might actually have to, like it almost, you know, if you wanna build a facial recognition system, regardless of whether or not, like if you value privacy, it's very, it's impossible to build a facial recognition system, a deep learning facial recognition system, because in order to build that, it requires you to violate the privacy of millions of people to collect their biometric data. Or if you want to do it differently, it requires you to completely reinvent the wheel of how it's done. Um, so I think that like that distinction between, um, you know, those really kind of like structural um, inherent issues of, you know, based off of the definition of what the, we say this thing is, uh, you know, there's inherent ethical uh, limitations to it. And that makes it, you know, difficult to adhere to specific, um, specific sort of like ethical expectations or ethical ideals. Like, I think that conversation is something that the field hasn't quite gotten to yet. And it might be the, it might be because, you know, we still have a lot of cars that where the brakes don't work. We still have a lot of very simple things we're not doing. We're not evaluating for performance on different demographic groups. Um, to Christian's point earlier, you know, we're not um, even paying attention necessarily to measurement bias and things that we should be paying attention to. So it's really easy sometimes to get cut off in the fact that, oh, we're not even doing these very small things. You know, we have so many cars we need to recall. So how can we think about, you know, the environmental impact? Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, at some point we'll have to sort of reckon with the reality of, you know, if we want to use this method, 
there's going to be inherent limitations to it. Um, um, and I think that's where auditing plays a role to, to your actual question now, <laughs> um, where auditing plays a role where with auditing, um, it's it really, I, I think I found that, you know, there's a lot of inherent challenges to auditing, um, like you're alluding to where um, if you're not an internal auditor, it's very difficult to access any information about the system that can kind of inform your understanding of how it works and what those limits actually are. Um, uh, but I think one really good thing about um, auditing or something I personally enjoy about it is that it's a great way to articulate those limitations um, where you can talk about the fact that, uh, you know, uh, here's what the data requirement is for this particular model or here is here are the decisions that were made about this particular model. And it, it makes it easier to sort of have conversations around, um, you know, things like, you know, if you're going to use this particular type of model and apply it to this particular specified context for this particular intended use, um, are those things actually compatible with what you say as an organization or as an individual, your ethical expectations are or your principles are? Um, and, you know, often that's where a lot of these tensions arise and we can kind of see things very visibly of, you know, machine learning is a method where because you're using data rather than explicitly defining rules for prediction, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the outcome is going to be inherently cloudy, right? You can't have certain expectations around um, transparency, around uh, interpretability, explainability. It's inherent to the method. Um, and I think that like those kind of conversations um, become really interesting when you say, and you're trying to apply it to a healthcare, a really high risk healthcare you know, context, maybe this is not the compatible method for that particular application. Like Christian's done a lot of great work in the criminal justice context to highlight, you know, um, if you're gonna build a model using these particular methods where it's impossible for us to figure out how this result came about, maybe you shouldn't be using it to determine how someone's gonna spend the next 25 years of their life. So I, I do think that um, I want to see the field kind of move in that direction. I think that's hopefully where we're going, where we recognize that in some situations, um, it's, you know, there, there's some, I, I guess uh, the way I would frame it is there's some ethical risk in using specific methods and uh, at, at all. And uh, we're beginning to slowly recognize that. Um, and as a result of that, I think there's now a movement or there's now a push to say that there's specific uh, as, as a result of the fact that just by using, by virtue of using deep learning or by virtue of having these big data sets or whatever it may be, however you want to characterize your model, by, you know, by virtue of specific characteristics of your model, you can't use it in particular context. So you can't use the current version we have of it in particular context. And I think audit, audits have done a good job really um, exposing this fact. Mm -hmm.